tutorial for our Young Red Dragon. Here we have the model essentially complete. Um, we're going to take a look at the base <clears throat> today. So we're going to take a look at painting the rock and the area around it. Shouldn't be too much at all. I got what I want out here ready to go. So plan, <clears throat> sorry, a little congested at the moment. Plan is to paint the rocks black, Abaddon black. It's going to take a couple of coats. I'm going to dry brush those rocks with a Ministratum gray. Um, so there's one more thing that I need. And then we're going to cover it with the gloss varnish. Sometimes this is known as Ard Coat. Around the rocks and then in between the rocks in these, like, these cracked areas. We're going to make it look like it's solidified lava. It's going to have some lava poking through. And then on the space, on the base around the rock, we're going to do, uh, like, it kind of look like a lava flow. I'm going to cover it real heavily with a cracking medium. Uh, this texture paint called the Ghrelin Earth. I think they have it in black as well, but I don't have that currently. So I'm going to cover it with the Ghrelin Earth, and real heavy texture with it. And that way when it dries, it'll crack real big and we'll be able to see the lava through it. So for the lava, I'm going to be using, what I got here? Evil Sun Scarlet, the Return of Fire, Fire Dragon Bright, also the Return of Uriel Yellow, and then for real highlight spots, White Scar. So we'll have it be pretty dramatic in these changes. So we'll jump right into it. We're going to start with Abaddon Black, or Abaddon Black, if you want to say it that way. Um, so my idea here is that we want to make it look kind of like uh, obsidian, which is a volcanic rock that's created when the lava cools really quickly. Um, but I just kind of think it looks cool. Kind of wouldn't doesn't make a lot of sense for a red dragon to have obsidian in their layer because it's going to be more like granite and things that form when lava cools slowly because that dragon is probably going to keep things hot but i think obsidian would look really cool on the base <clears throat> and just the black i think would be a good contrast to the brightness of the model itself and how colorful it is so that's kind of my explanation of why i'm going with that instead of i could just paint this like rock have it be gray or uh tan and then we could add i was going to add do some grass tufts on it and add some uh like uh basing materials to the base itself around the rock but i figured you know what we're looking at painting here we can do basing another time uh, i think this would be cool to show off this effect of the lava which I think is just very fitting for a red dragon. Uh, so here I'm just going to do a real quick heavy coat of the black on the rock. This rock is really, really textured, so it's going to take a lot more paint than I initially thought. Um, it actually works pretty well for it being volcanic rock. Obsidian's not always totally smooth. Fun fact about obsidian is that it looks black, but it's actually classified as a light igneous rock because most of the minerals that make it up are very light in color, but it has these black flecks of... Oh, I just walked myself into a corner. I can't remember exactly what the min mineral is that's the black flecks. Maybe feldspar of some kind. Um, and there's so many of these black flecks that uh, that's kind of just what our eye sees, and it makes the rock look black. Um, but if you look at obsidian under a microscope, it's very lightly colored, practically transparent, and you can see all the black flecks, which is cool. Kind of like how, you know, older comic, you know, comic books used to color their pages with dots, basically to save on ink and for the technology at the time, and you put enough of the dots there, you don't have to cover the whole area in that color, you just get enough of those dots and then your brain kind of fills in the rest and you see that color which is pretty cool in case you don't know i used to teach earth science so i know this about uh obsidian because my students would always freak out uh when you're using like a dichotomous key to label to identify the rocks 
even if you know, oh, this is obsidian because it's black and smooth, um, they still have to understand, like, what it's made up of and why it's obsidian, and one of those things is, you know, looking at the color of it and obsidian, it's like, well, just so you know, this is considered light even though it's black, and they would argue, and then we'd explain, and I'd show them how they see that on the chart, you know, fun and games. I think it's about interesting about Abaddon Black is that sometimes it dries a little glossy. Sometimes we want it, sometimes we don't. In this case, I do want it glossy, but we're going to hit it with that um, gloss varnish just to make it extra, sh sh extra so. I want to uh, really have it be reflective. Once this is done, I'll grab an example of something else I painted in a similar way that I think looks pretty good. This is something I have tried before. This might not even need two coats. Usually this Abaddon Black I'm a little disappointed with because it doesn't cover as well. It's not as opaque as I want it to be. Being black, you'd think one coat you'd be good, but it's a strangely thin black. Unless it just, just happens to be this pot I've been using for a while. Um, where things like reds and blues tend to get better coverage than the black. For whatever reason. Some of these areas you might need to do another coat over real quick. But for now that's pretty good. We'll let that dry. And then we'll get a little dry brush. Paint pot didn't want to stay open, so I just used the paintbrush cover to hold it open. Reach the paint easier. All right, let's take a look at dry off this brush. I'm gonna grab that on model real quick. Bear with me. Of course, there's other things on top of it in the box, so I gotta move it around. Alright, here we go. So, this is the Herdstone for my Beastmen, or, uh, Beasts of Chaos Army for um, Age of Sigmar. Um, so this is what we're looking for. You can see it's real glossy. Um, so I have it opposed to um, just kind of typical rocky, more like granite type rocks here. Uh, that light gray, and then I imagine these Beastmen found this cool um, black stone. Um, I was going to paint in the eyes to be like glowing red, but I never got around to it. I just kind of figured it look look good like that. Um, and I painted all the glowing blue runes on there, of course. So this is a little tufts of grass I was talking about we could have put on there. Um, so one more for this effect. So I'm, I'm going to do a little less of an edge highlight than this one where I have really stark contrast highlights of this gray on there. I'm just going to do a, a dry brush for a bit, a little less intense this one i really wanted to show the the kind of face on the stone we don't have that in the red dragon so i'm not going to bother with that uh, but that's kind of the look we're going for there all right so next up let's take a look at it's going to take a minute to dry because there's quite a bit of black on there let's start doing a bit of a swirl pattern on where i um kind of base coated it with the um Wraithbone once again, just so we have a nice, um, I don't want to paint it on top of black because that'll kind of mute our colors. I like the idea of doing it on the wraith bone so it's a bit brighter. Help these paints pop on the base because we're going to apply this uh, crackle paint on top. So we really want our colors to show through. Um, one last thing that we're going to do, I'm going to do on this that won't be on here on this video is after the crackle paint dries, I'm going to do what's called an overbrush, which is kind of like dry brushing, but with, without taking a bunch of paint off your brush, I'm going to do an overbrush, um, with black over it. So it looks like cracked lava. All right. So I'm just going to do big bands of color here. I'm not going to mm -hmm. get real like technical with it um because again most of it's going to be covered up anyway and then we'll add the orange and yellow you know what? actually what i'm going to do here change my mind as i say it. i'm just going to do the whole thing red first 
and then we'll do like flows of orange and yellow in between and that way wherever the cracks form there'll be some color poking through you might not be noticing uh, some of my wraith bone isn't totally dry so it's kind of getting mixed in with the red uh, I'm okay with that at this point because it gives us some variation of the color we got some more like pinkish areas some more uh, true red and that's okay I'm actually gonna take this opportunity to paint the edge of the base red just because um, edge of these bases are real small if you're painting something like Warhammer or Marvel Crisis Protocol the base edges are much deeper um, you can do whatever you want with that lately I've been um, Crisis Protocol I just paint black um, different armies I do different colors um, depending on like what their theme is I'll show you another one in a second here so I'm just gonna do it red here just because I think that'll look kind of cool all right so we just got red so right now that probably looks weird it'll make more sense as we go I'm trying not to sniffle too much into the, the microphone, but um, so example here would be one of my space marines who's a work in progress. This is a captain in Phobos armor. Um, I do cork, a layer of cork on the base to raise him up a little bit so it looks cool, and then I paint um, actually some of the ground earth uh, on there to give it some texture, and then I do the, ba the base edge in, um, I think it's corn red. Uh, just to kind of tie in with the rest of the model. Um, the, the whole army has that and it's really uniform. Um, I, I did not have Deepkin for Age of Sigmar. Uh, they're supposed to be like undersea elves, so I have them like with this beach theme on the base. They all have these little tufts that I think kind of look like seaweed, and I give them this uh, like turquoise uh, base edge just kind of for fun. So. And then uh, Ad Mech, here's another one that's a work in progress. This is going to be uh, one of the new models. I think he's called a Dedasolus or something like that. And base, this is obviously not anywhere near done, but I do keep the edge of their bases that um, metallic color just because that seems fitting for the Adeptus Mechanicus. So really you can do whatever you want with the edge. Um, like I said, in this case I'm doing it red just to keep it tied in with the whole red dragon idea. So that's still dry and that's all right. We'll do a couple little swirls of orange next. In this case, I'm not going to bother um, thinning it down or anything because I want, I don't think that we're not going for any kind of detail here. We're just slapping some color down. You can see it's mixing with the red. Um, if people like these tutorial videos, you can do some other type of techniques like wet blending which is something I could, I could certainly use more practice with anyway um, which is a really cool technique that allows you to blend your colors together as you are painting you can get nice um, smooth gradients and transitions between different colors it's a it's a usually considered a higher level technique um, I don't often do it because it is very time consuming, especially if you want to do it right. I've tried it here and there, um, but it's something, I know Charlie has been working on his for a while and he's got some good stuff that he can show, um, but that's something that we could take a look at on here in the future. Alright, so we got some orange on there, so we can start to see it. You can see it's starting to look a bit like lava. Uh, as I look at it and clean off my brush here, I'm going to make these orange, some of these orange stripes a little bit wider because I'm going to do yellow kind of in the middle of them to show where the lava is a bit warmer or a bit hotter because as it gets hotter, it gets lighter in color. Um, not that I spent a lot of time around lava, but I looked at a bunch of references, images, and things like that. So we'll get some yellow. Shouldn't need a ton, but yellow, as we talked about before, is not very opaque. So we'll do some yellow kind of down the middle of the orange here. I'll do a couple random lines of yellow, too, just to stand out when we apply 
the crackle paint. Now that's going to be something we'll do after this is totally dry, otherwise it'll completely defeat the purpose. Um, so the texture paints are really cool that GW came out with a few years ago that um, just allow you to base your minis with paint instead of uh, using a, a, a texture um, basing material like flock or dirt or whatever. Um, and it's just like another option out there. Um, I use it as like an accent on my bases because usually I like the look of something more real like actual the, the dirt or uh, like static grass or flock, whatever you want to call it. More or less the same thing. Um, give you know more 3d aspect to it the texture paints are cool they, they can give you like there's there's ones that I think it's called astro granite uh oh yeah I actually have that right here astro granite um we take a look i see i haven't used this much i know what we can see in there let's see if i can angle my light in while we're looking at it through the camera so we can see how it's you know looks kind of like granite And that'll just, I got a tool for that to scoop it out. Uh, I used to use a brush for it, but it really works better with some kind of scoop. All right, last one here. We're going to add a little bit of white. Oh, if I can get the pot open, good Lord. And I'm going to put that right down the middle of the yellow areas and just for a final pop. Uh, what's kind of funny about this is I don't even know if we're going to, you know, what exactly we're going to see after we apply the texture paint because, oop, almost got it in my hand. Um, where it crackles is kind of random. Uh, the thicker you apply the texture paint, the more it cracks. So, be a little careful with that because if you apply it too thickly, then it cracks a bit too much and... You'll get big flakes coming off, which would reveal too much of this ugly base. We don't want that because this is pretty horrendous right now. I mean, really, to me, that looks kind of like lava. Some people might call it good there. If you want to call it good there, more power to you. That's fine. We're going to take it two steps further. We'll see one of those steps. I will post the final completed dragon pictures. Um... On Facebook, once it's all done, i got to finish a little bit of work on the dragon itself. I'm going to spray it with a gloss, uh, a matte varnish to allow it to um, kind of handle handling a little bit better. Because especially the contrast paints, for as much as I love them, they do wear off relatively easily from regular just use holding them. I noticed from holding the dragon different spots, um, particularly around the arms where I was holding it, while painting it, some of it was wearing off already, so I gave it another little hit with the with the paint and was good to go. Alright. The black rock is pretty good. So we can see what we're kind of going for here. This is pretty striking already. Um, like I said, some people might just be fine with it like that. We take put our dragon on here. You put that on the table against some PCs. That looks pretty cool. There we go. Get the whole dragon in the shot. Um, that looks pretty good. I know my light is putting a lot of shadow on him, but it's a bit better. Like I said, we're going to go one, two steps further. All right. So next up, we're going to dry brush. What I have? Administratum Gray. This is kind of a mid-gray. Uh, from my personal collection here, I got a couple different layers of gray here. There's Mechanicus Standard Gray, which is a nice dark gray, which is a real good first highlight on black. Ministratum Gray is kind of in the middle. Then there's Ulthuin Gray, which obviously is much lighter. And then you can go into things like Deepkin Flesh to go another step before white if you really wanted to build that up. But in this case, I'm kind of skipping right to the middle because we want a bit of that contrast between the black rock and the highlights because it'll kind of accentuate our glossiness. Now I can see a few spots on this, on the rock are not totally dry. Um, 
which really is okay as long as we stay away from it while we're dry brushing because I don't want to get a bunch of wet paint on my brush but I can see over here oops, over in this area it's hard to tell because it all looks glossy on the camera but I can see uh, I got a pocket there that's a bit wet and a pocket there but the rest of it looks pretty good so we're going to do a light dry brush just to give it some depth of color oops touch the lava a little bit it's actually okay kind of look make like it look like a uh, little sparks or embers floating around on top that might actually work out well and that's it super quick dry brush all the raised up areas are a little highlighted Try to really dry off that brush Put it back in its corner um, so again I'm not sure how well you can see that versus the glare but I think that's pretty you can see where there's some gray not just the kind of glossiness of the paint naturally so super quick dry brush so we're going to add a couple of veins excuse me of our lava flowing showing that this rock isn't completely hardened yet uh, there is a red dragon perched on top of it so you know they tend to kind of emanate heat so we'll add a couple of spots where that's like the deepest cracks and recesses are going to have some lava pooling so i'm going to start with red just like we did on the outside i'm going to kind of build it up towards the middle actually i got a whole demon army i painted this way to i wanted them to look like lava demons so in all the, the cracks so i painted them black kind of the same scheme here black with the gloss varnish and then uh i painted all the recesses it was like the opposite of typical shading all the recesses got more color um i think it looks really cool i like it a lot i've gotten a good amount of compliments on it probably the, one of my better looking armies um it just takes forever i timed it one time i was doing one blood letter which is like a man-sized demon if you don't know and just to do the yellow of this uh because i do the same thing where it was red then yellow then orange or orange then yellow then white um just doing the yellow on the on one model took seven minutes and i've got 30 of those and that was just you know part of the army so it's a very time consuming process but totally worth it because i think it looks great maybe i'll grab one of those in a minute while waiting for something to dry just got to think of where they are behind me in my my cave. All right, so that's red. So I said I just picked out a few spots to add that flowing lava to. So I think it'll look cool. And then we're going to do some orange. I don't want to stick the brush back in the pot if I can avoid it because I'll probably get some red mixed in. Which, again, that's okay if it's mixing on its own a little bit. So we're going to add our orange to the middle. Typically this paint dries really fast, but I'm applying it rather thick, so it's not totally drying before I come in with the next. We're going to have to build it up a little bit. Like I said before, if I was doing this just on my own, not for a video, I would have kind of a couple projects going at once, and while one thing was drying, I'd be working on something else. Uh... Like during this dragon, I probably would have been working on the base while working on the dragon, like waiting for things to dry in the wings, do the dry brush on the base, waiting for something else to dry, start painting the lava on the base, things like that. But you know, when you're making these tutorial videos, it's not really, I feel like it's not going to be helpful to people like, okay, now we're switching gears to this and be like, wait, wait, what? All right, then we got some yellow. Actually, there's still wet yellow on my palette, so we'll just save that. Actually, you know what? I'm going to give that a moment and see if i got a demon right nearby. Look at that. i got a whole box of them. Boxes of models all over the place down here. So let's take a look at a good completed one. So this is a Herald of Corn, which is like a leader blood letter. So um, 
the back of it shows it off pretty well I think we can see where the natural like breaks would be in the skin is where the hot lava is kind of poking out and again I applied the gloss varnish on his skin so we take a look at the underside because his chest has a lot of that poking out so this is one of my favorites he came out really really well he's jumping off this cool throne ready to slice your head off because that's what corn wants all right that's enough drying because my yellow is going to be dry here in a minute so i don't know i didn't mention i'm switch i switched to the smaller brush my um model master brush um for the orange because we are covering we want to paint less of it as we go to the lighter colors um the red i was pretty I wouldn't say careless, but I applied very broadly because as we apply the other colors, I want some of that to still show through. I still want to see some of the red because that'll show the kind of glowing. So the yellow, there's going to be even less of. I want to see some of the orange and the red there. All right. Take a look at that. We got our lava flows and now just because I like to be a little extreme sometimes we're going to add just a couple pips of white so I have it wet on the palette so that's good we're going to add just a couple little dots of white to show where it's extremely hot so I usually do that right in the middle of something where it would naturally be the hottest so here I'm going to have it be kind of down in the front by the actual lava flow Kind of where there's the most yellow we can kind of tone that down with a spot of white get it nice and bright just to say adventure is not wanted here it's too hot all right so that's it for our lava flow so put my cover back on we'll take a look at that Good place to hold it so we can see our four little lava flows i think that looks pretty cool and again this isn't something that's going to hold up to super close examination you can see there's not good blending or anything like that but you hold it back a little ways like you're going to be looking at it on the table people aren't going to be right on top of it if you're playing D, &D or whatever you got dragon on a cool rock a cool lava rock All right, not everything is quite dry yet. We can't apply that crackle paint just yet. I'm gonna let the stuff, the lava we just painted dry a little bit more before we do our gloss varnish. Otherwise it's gonna smear it and then just make, make a mess. And that's not what we want at all. It's gonna to totally defeat the purpose. Um, so I'm gonna give that a minute to dry because everybody came to watch this to this video to watch paint dry, right? There's something I wanted to mention. I feel like I neglected to mention in other videos. Um, I guess just in general, obviously you're watching this on the For Whom the Die Rolls um, YouTube channel because that's where it's being posted. Um, you know, if you check out other, we got vid, um, geez, but yeah, we have videos. It's YouTube, of course we have videos. We've got other battle reports of various games, um, mostly Warhammer, GW based stuff. Um, if you're curious, um, if you're watching this because um, you're in quarantine <laughs> and you're doing stuff to paint, uh, we got plenty of entertaining videos in that way too. Maybe learn a new game that way. Um, we're just making these videos, having a good time, a bunch of idiots. So even if you don't know the game, I think they're plenty fun to watch. Uh, or I think they would be plenty fun to watch. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like my shameless plug. Check out the stuff we have for the die rolls on our YouTube. It, we've kind of been out of producing videos lately. We just haven't had time between work and kids and everything. Um, it's really slowed down, but it's something that, that it's not, we're not done. All right, so gloss varnish. Transparent paint. Let's get focus, focus. It's just looks like hardly anything's there so you're just going to apply this 
You don't want to go too thick with this because it will get uh, start to look cloudy if it's too thick. So I'm going to apply this in just one reasonable coat all over the rock. I'm going to stay away from the lava for right now just to make sure it is dried. But I'm just going to do a simple coat all over it to make sure it is nice and glossy and looks like cooled obsidian. At least relatively like cooled obsidian. This is a nice and easy step. Let's just give it that last little bit of spark. It might look wet or glo or yeah, glossy. It might look wet or slimy or something, which is kind of okay because that's if you see obsidian in real life, that's typically what it looks like, um, especially if it's like freshly created. There, that's it. Again, I'm not sure how it's showing up on the camera, but it looks pretty glossy to me there. So that's our obsidian lava rock with some lava poking through. All right. So our last step is going to be to apply that Agrex Earth Shade to our lava flow. Let's see if it's dry yet by giving a just a kind of risky tap. Got nothing on my thumb. Looks like it's pretty well dry. A little spot there, so it's not totally dry. All right, so. While that's finishing up, whoops, I don't know why I'm shaking this. Texture paints you don't need to shake. So texture a grill and earth. So it comes in a nice big pot. Uh, I've already gone through at least one of these. Why don't you focus? There you go. Um, so just like we saw with the other one, uh, this one is actually separating a bit because I've had it for a while. So here is my texture tool, um, Citadel product, which is the GW brand of paints and supplies. Why don't you focus? There we go. So it's Citadel, Citadel small or medium texture. So these are kind of cool. They got little basically like spatulas. I have my hand for some focus here. Come on. Got to find that sweet spot. So you can see it's a very flat, broad surface. And the other side is kind of the same thing. Very flat. Uh, so it's a smaller tool. Allows you to move it around like models' feet and things. So what I'm going to do first here is... I'm not going to use that just yet. I'm going to grab an old handy-dandy stirring, uh, what's that called? Paperclip. So if we take a look in here, I'm not sure how well you can see. Bring the light over. We've got a bit of separation going on there. Our medium and pigment and everything is separating up. So I'm going to take my handy-dandy stirring paperclip and just simply stir it up get those things mixed back together so it dries properly as before i'm no chemist i teach life sciences not chemistry uh, but i know paints i have a couple different parts to them and sometimes they separate after sitting it's been months since i've used this paint probably so i'm not surprised it's separated a bit what's cool it is paint um I just Swish this around in my water a bit so you can clean it off pretty easily. I should say it's paint based so it is soluble in water. And then we're going to just take a glob of it with our tool. Uh, maybe a little too big of a glob. Find a good place to keep this in shot. And we're just going to smear this on top of what we just made. You might think, well, you just paint all that. Why are you covering it up? have to check back on our Facebook page and see the final results. And I want to apply this really thick so it will crack big and show the lava underneath. If it's too thin, the cracks won't go all the way through and it'll just kind of crack on the surface. And then it's, that's not what we want here. We want to crack. We want cracks to go all the way through the medium so we can see the lava underneath. Since we spent time painting that, we want to see it. 
like I said before, after that, after it, that's totally dry, which you probably want to give it a day. It'll look pretty good after a few hours. This stuff does take a while, but you really want to give it a lot of time before you paint it again, or else you're going to smear it and smudge it, and that's going to defeat the purpose of the crack. What I'm going to do is just go over it with black, Abaddon black, uh, and the gloss of varnish so it matches the rock on top. Otherwise, it's just going to look weird. With two different colors there, like one being black and one being this brown. Like I said before, obviously dragons aren't real, but we want it to look like it could be real, right? And that's just one style of painting. You could go totally cartoon. You could go comic style and paint in the black lines in between everything and really make it look like it's jumping from the pages of a comic book. That's not my style. I go for more realistic tones, um, but it's your model. Do what you want with it. Um, I think it's something... There's a guy who does tutorials for the comic book style for Crisis Protocol models in particular. I think it's like Mad Duck Studios or something. It's something with a duck. <laughs> duck Brush Studios, something like that. Uh, if you just uh, YouTube search for like duck painting or something like that, you'll probably find something. Um, so this is where we're going to end our dragon for the tutorial. I'm going to spin them around a little bit because this, this side was more complete with the dry brushing. Um, like we said, I will post completed pictures of him on Facebook after this dries and cracks. And we go over it again with black and the varnish and we'll see how he looks completely 100% done. I also have him sprayed in the matte varnish um, and that way he's a little more protected. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if you want any more of these kind of things. If there's anything particular you want to hear about, um, type of style or technique or a particular type of model. I got plenty of things I need to paint myself anyway. So if you want to see like space marine armor or a tank, I think I have a tank to paint. Yeah, I got a predator. Uh, anything more along those lines or whatever, just let us know. Hit us up on the Facebook uh, for whom the die rolls or comment on these videos. I'll be taking a look at them uh, Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed it if you're painting during quarantine time. I hope you stay safe Otherwise game on <laughs>